medical decision making should respect biological reality and the dignity of the person. 18 medical and health policy organizations, including the American College of Pediatricians, are calling for an end to the controversial practice of so-called gender-affirming care. In a recently released declaration, they urge medical organizations to immediately stop the promotion of social affirmation, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries for children and adolescents who experience distress over their biological sex. Just this April, the National Health Service in England stopped routinely prescribing puberty blockers to those under 18. The NHS made the decision after commissioning a review of several studies. They follow similar protocols in other European countries. Norway's Healthcare Investigation Board ruled in 2023 a lack of medical evidence supporting puberty blockers or reassignment surgery and issued guidelines to restrict those methods to research settings only. In 2022, Swedish health officials issued guidelines limiting puberty blockers, hormones and mastectomies for minors. Along similar lines, Finland urges psychotherapy instead of puberty blockers with surgery not offered to those under 18. France calls for the utmost reserve on hormone treatments for minors, and lawmakers are calling for a ban on gender transitions for minors. And a recent report published by the group Environmental Progress just this spring claims the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, or WPATH, one of the leading advocates for gender transition in minors, were actually aware of the dangerous and potentially deadly side effects of these treatments, but supported them anyway. Dr. Paul Hruz was one of the many doctors that, packed the that backed the declaration to protect children from these life-altering surgeries and hormone treatments. Thank you for joining us. Why was this declaration made now? Why not sooner? Uh, it's very timely in that uh, with the movement uh, to greater caution internationally, uh, what is happening here in the United States is really uh, digging in and continuing to use uh, this affirmative model of care so now the United States is really the outlier worldwide uh, in continuing to insist uh, that there's adequate evidence to support this intervention. And many efforts here in the United States uh, to draw attention to the many, many concerns have been dismissed as being uh, fringe views. Uh, and this declaration really illustrates the magnitude of the concern across the medical profession. Uh, and many of the physicians that previously had uh, not uh, felt comfortable uh, expressing their reservations and concerns uh, are now uh, stepping forward uh, to join the effort to draw attention to the dangers uh, of the uh, current model that's being used in the United States. The value of strength in numbers. Well, what are the impacts of gender surgeries and puberty suppressing hormones on children? Once they have surgery or take pills, is there any chance of turning back? Uh, and that is one of the, the major concerns, uh, since there's so little we know about the cause of this condition, and we know that this affirmative approach is actually leading many uh, children to proceed into uh, later stages of intervention that uh, really have lifelong impact, uh, including effects on, on fertility, um, uh, likelihood of, of sterility law, lifelong, and other medical risks. Uh, and uh, it, by receiving these uh, interventions uh, without adequate understanding of the of full spectrum of risks, knowing that they already have risks, and what is now becoming apparent is that the arguments of showing benefit are, are based upon very weak data, and at best one can say we have no idea, uh, but I think there's uh, certainly already evidence uh, that they continue to suffer. So the goal is, is to really provide truly helpful care uh, to these affected uh, individuals, uh, and we can't do that until we uh, acknowledge uh, that the current model is lacking in that scientific evidence. Dr. Roos, how early are you seeing these controversial practices happening in American children? Uh, it is in, important to know that initially when they were proposed uh, in Europe, in, in the Dutch uh, protocol, uh, that the administration of cross-sex hormones uh, was reserved until 18 year, or 16 years of age, and surgeries were not offered until uh, the age of majority after 18 years. And the latest uh, iteration of the WPATH uh, uh, guidelines uh, that they have removed all age restrictions. That means that uh, uh, girls as young as uh, eight years of age, boys as young as nine years of age uh, could be offered puberty blockers and really very shortly thereafter exposed to hormones. Uh, we know that uh, there are, are certainly recorded cases of children as early as 12 years of age 
uh, undergoing bilateral mastectomy uh, it, for females that desire to appear uh, as males. So then what are the right treatments, the medical treatments for gender dysphoria? Uh, there still is, is much that we need to learn about how to effectively care for this very uh, uh, unique uh, uh, patient population. But what we do know is that there's underlying psychiatric um, uh, morbidities, uh, depression and anxiety that exist uh, that's very prevalent in this uh, uh, patient population. And certainly we have effective uh, tools to be able to provide a care. Uh, there's also evidence uh, that needs further research uh, as to uh, whether uh, by uh, choosing a, an approach to uh, address the underlying psychological difficulties uh, will have benefit in this population. That does not carry the same risk uh, as the affirmative approach uh, when one is embarking upon uh, administering powerful hormones, uh, progressing on to surgeries uh, with, with irreversible and potentially lifelong complications. Well, we'll keep watching this as the science and the policies develop. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruse. My pleasure.